Okay, hello friends. Welcome back to getting yourself organized with org mode. The screencast about org mode. Today <coughs> we look at linking of external things. You remember the last video we linked to other places in the file. Here are still the examples that we linked to a headline or to a custom ID. And now I have crafted some examples that we link to external things. First of all, we can link, uh, external link looks like an internal one. You have a target or you have a target in the description. And the target is usually, you have a sort of protocol and you have a location. So you see here, I have the, the protocol, it's a file. And the file is stored at home, Joe, manuals, or PDF. So if I create that link by closing that last bracket, it looks like that. If I press uh, the mouse button to follow the link, you see a uh, ghost view is opening and I see my org manual. So I have made a link to a file. The same is true that I link to a website. You see HTTP as the protocol and www.orgmode.org is the location. So that's quite easy as well. I press the mouse, now it takes a while for the browser to open and you see I'm on the org mode website. So also nothing special. Then if you are a power user of Emacs, you will probably uh, have your contacts in the BBDB database and you can also link to the BBDB. So if I close this link, I have a text that says call Susan Jones and if I press the mouse then the BBDB buffer opens and it shows me the contact details of Susan Jones. So you can also link to the contacts inside BBDB and the most uh, sophisticated thing, let's go back to that buffer, will be linking to uh, items with an ID property. You see an ID is a sort of UUID construct and I can link to that. So now I am linking to that ID. If I press uh, the mouse button, you see I end up on that headline that has this UUID as the ID property. Now people will ask, oh my god, how do we get an UUID property there? because uh, you don't know it by heart and, and you can't uh, create random numbers in your brain. It, it would be very uh, annoying and uh, of course we have a computer to do that. So whenever you want an uh, UUID uh, ID property, you could do something like that. I just show you, you press Alt X. Now let me wait one second. Keymon is still missing, but I can open it. You see, you press Alt X that says, uh, no, not here, it's here. Alt X execute, and then I say I want the function um, org id get create. Clock. Oh, I was here. So now I have a custom id here, and I have an id here as well. It was using that on that headline, or I go on that headline and say uh, alt x org id get create. You see, I still have another property. But of course, uh, no, you, you won't do that. You say, am I crazy that I have to type so much? And you are right. So I will put some uh, nice code into the comments of this video, you will get a few lines of um, elisp code and you put this in your IMAX file. The file that is read uh, on the initialization. So if you look here, if I open it, uh, let me just open the IMAX file xf.emax. Now we go at the end. You see this is the code that you will find in the uh, comments in the description of the YouTube video. 
And if we go back to our mylife.org buffer, you will ask what does this code do? There is one snippet that I found on, I guess it was Stack Overflow. And the very nice function that this code has is if you save your org file, if you are in org mode, you see uh, this is org mode, and you save your file, I do this now, then, oh, what a miracle, every headline gets a ID property automatically. So this uh, part of the code just does one thing, it uh, takes, it browses through all headlines and if there is one headline that has not yet an ID property, it creates one for you. So at the end you end up with a file that has uh, ID property for every headline. The other code that I put in there was code that I made by myself. And that code has one uh, function. Uh, you go on a headline and you press F5. I assigned the code to the F5 function key. And if I press F5 now, you see, then it says copied that UUID. It's the same as it's the ID of this headline to the kill ring or to the clipboard. So when I have to craft the link, I just could put ID and I passed it that link and now I have that link to my headline. So if you want to, to create headlines on the fly, uh, you can open two uh, IMAX windows or, or whatever and then one you just uh, put your cursor on the thing that you want the ID because okay you could also say I mark this ID but you have to mark it completely, that's difficult. And then I copy it to the clipboard, but if I put the uh, cursor here and I press F5, then this thing is in the clipboard. So you can craft uh, links quite easily. And, okay, let me get rid of that line. Then you can do really easily uh, links to IDs and uh, ID links have a very nice uh, feature that I will show you now. You, you remember this link uh, 123. This link has a custom ID. Okay, now it also has a UUID but we link to the custom ID. And now let's assume, okay, I take this, uh, this one is done. Let's put it, CT, done, it's done, UA, CC, and now I say, okay, it's done, I can archive it. You remember archiving, control C, X, A, bingo, this item is gone. So what happens to my link to custom ID, my ID 123, if I click on it, it says, oh no, sorry, didn't find my ID 123 because it's out of the file and it's a local link to a item in your file and it's no longer there so this link is practically broken. Now let's go to that headline. We link with the ID property. We are still here, we can do the same. CT, done, it's done too. CC, we are happy and now I put this in the archive. Same procedure, control C, X, A. The thing is archived. We can still save the file again. Okay, so what will happen if I click on that link? We do it. And you see we open the archive file. And we are there at the original entry with this ID. Inside the archive file. So you can link to your tasks. With an, org, uh, with an ID and uh, even if you archive your task uh, org mode will find uh, the ID and uh, it finds it because it has a rule that says I look into every uh, agenda file and I look into every archive file and even if you put it in other files org mode has a sort of housekeeping file uh, that is stored under org ID locations file. 
it's usually a file in your IMAX folder and your dot IMAX uh, D if you look uh, let me see if I can show it to you it's xf dot IMAX D and you see there is a no there is not why is it not oh yeah it's it's hidden Ah, now, now I'm a bit in trouble. Let me see where this one... No, oh, let's do it the other way. We are not so much in trouble. We cancel this and we say just archive, uh, customize. We take a specific group that's org ID. You see here we are, and there is the org ID locations file, and it's under the dot imxd dot org ID locations. And this file, org mode stores where the UUIDs, uh, in which file the items are with uh, any UUID. It's quite a big file, and I pointed on this because if you do it uh, like I do, sooner or later that you say okay I put all my org files in a cloud storage so that I can share them between two computers you should also put this file into your cloud storage so that you have the same uh, org ID locations file on every computer that you are using otherwise you will end up in a situation that you say okay I have an ID for the link but my uh, computer doesn't find it because uh, the org ID locations file here is the local. Okay, so let's put it here. No. This is really a mess. It's Saturday evening and I'm messing up, but I hope you, you saw the power of ID links. I mean, I do it uh, quite often now with my little code that I crafted with the F5 key. It's really easy to, when I do my day plan, that I say, okay, I write down what I want to do and if I have tasks in my org file then I do a quick link to this. So whenever I browse through my daily plans in uh, let's say five years from now and I think oh my god what was that task that I did on this day and if there's a link I can click on the link and org mode will find the complete task description. So I hope this was something new for you. And uh, I hope that the code doesn't mess up your computer. And I must confess, I have, I, I have had uh, the level of alias programming like uh, Hello World before I did this small code snippet. And then I googled a bit because I knew that function uh, here that org ID get create should uh, return the UUID but uh, where is it in ELISP and how can I assign it or how can I put it to the uh, clipboard. It was just a bit of googling and I also added some code so that this uh, key does only work when you are in an org mode buffer and not everywhere else. But at the end it turned out to be working and it's quite comfortable because I confess uh, two weeks ago I was still doing the links like that, that I say, okay, let me copy it and let me put it somewhere else. But now it's really quite easy. One key press and I have that ID in my clipboard and I can paste it to any link I want. Okay, guys, that was quite a long episode or a long snippet for today. But it was, I hope, uh, very interesting for you. And uh, see you next time. Thanks again for watching, for all the comments, and enjoy working with Alt Mode because it's really, as you see now, the, the most uh, sophisticated uh, thing that you can use to get organized, and it's really easy to uh, extend uh, when you do a bit of work. Okay, thanks and see you next time. I'll be back.